Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nicole from Dogo Argentino USA. This is my stud Zeus. We are going to do a video today. I hope that you will bear with me. Um, I've never shot outdoors and I'm not used to unscripted videos. But what we're gonna do is a little collar roundup. Several people have asked me about collars and so this is what's going on. So let's talk about some of your options. Now, collars are of two varieties in my mind. There's collars that are specifically to be used as training tools, and there's collars that are specifically meant to identify the dog, essentially tag holders. Um, I don't generally collar my dogs at all when they're at home. And I do realize that for some people that's a risk. If you have a dog that's an escape artist, that is a bad plan. My dogs are not escape artists. They want to be with me all the time. So I don't really have that, that huge concern. <coughs> Zeus has something to say. Okay, so my dogs don't generally try to escape, but if you have a situation where you've got, this is my Emma, you've got dogs that are looking to find their way out of your yard, definitely call them. He's Bobby's in the yard. Mommy's in the yard. Oh, so wet kisses, Bobby's in the yard. All right, so something you should know um, about collars. Like I said, there's two types. There's collars that are training aids and there's collars that are tag holders. I also think that you should microchip your dogs. I microchip my puppies for two reasons. I microchip litters because I want the microchip to be tied to their bear results, their brainstem auditory elicited response, so that you know that the dog's hearing status is the dog that you bought. So to me, that's very important. And of course, I'm always terrified that uh, something will happen and the dog will not be found because it doesn't have a microchip. So I like to microchip dogs. There are some people that don't believe in it, but I do. So all my dogs are microchipped, but collars are a great thing for tag holders. So let's go through some collars. Now this is a plastic buckle collar and it has a little slide right here. It's adjustable. This particular one is by Blueberry Pet. And I'm going to have links in the description, which are affiliate links from Amazon if you wanna support the channel. Otherwise, you can just look up the brand. This has a nice metal D-ring and a quick snap buckle. For me, this is a puppy collar. It's also known as a flat collar, sometimes called a buckle collar for the obvious reason that it has a buckle. Uh, this is a puppy collar, and there's two reasons it's a puppy collar. One, this is a failure point for an adult dog. Uh, these are great for puppies, but an adult dog could easily break this. Um, so this is not, to me, a good adult collar. The other thing is this is too narrow in diameter to make a good adult collar. Adults need more width so that the pressure is spread across their neck and not concentrated on their esophagus. And if you have a very thin collar, this one I believe is 5 8 of an inch. On an adult dog, this would concentrate the pressure right at the front of the neck at the esophagus and it can cause injury. So I'm not a fan of these as adult collars. Now, this collar was also one of Zeus's puppy collars, and you'll notice this one is significantly thicker. This is probably not quite two inch. I would say this is probably an inch and three quarters. Again, it has that quick release buckle, which is convenient, but a huge failure point on a strong breed. This particular one is from Rough Roxy. And you have your same little buckle adjustment here, nice D-ring. So to me, this is a collar that I would feel comfortable if my dog was merely in the yard. This isn't a collar that I would personally take a Dogo Argentino on a walk with for the simple reason that this is a huge failure point. Now this collar, I actually like a lot. This is by Regal Hound Designs, and this is a martingale collar, meaning I don't, hopefully you guys can see that. As you pull, it has a separate ring on the bottom and it 
pulls it tight similar to a choke chain collar but it distributes the weight more evenly than a choke chain collar it is adjustable this is fabric now surprisingly fabric collars are actually quite strong in general uh, so this is a collar i would consider taking my dogo on a walk with because surprisingly uh, fabric is actually very very strong but there's a lot of negatives to this we're going to talk about that so one of the positives about a nylon collar is nylon is actually a plastic thread it's incredibly strong so in terms of the actual thread or fabric of the collar if it's nylon i don't worry about breakage i have several different uh, come-alongs in my car because i like to off-road and they are rated up to like 35,000 pounds. So it is very unlikely if this is in good condition that this part of the collar would fail. Where you would get failure is definitely the plastic buckle. Now in this collar, uh, your failure points are going to be the sewn part. It isn't probably going to be this fabric. It's probably going to be where it's actually sewn over the um, hardware. So it's double sewn, it's very nicely made. Like I said, it's a beautiful collar, but honestly for me, I tend to use this collar for photo shoots. This is more of a decorative collar to me. But I would take the dog on a walk and I'd be, as long as the collar was in good condition, and you should always look at your collars when you're putting them on and taking them off to make sure that you don't have wear and tear. One of the other benefits to this particular collar is because this is a plastic, you are not going to get any kind of bacteria in it. You may get mold because it can still uh, lodge itself in between the fibers. It's actually woven, so that is possible. But in terms of bacteria, you know, it's not going to be a disease type carrier. Okay, so let's talk about a different type of collar. This is a more classic, this was Zeus's baby collar. This was a custom made um, martingale collar. It's actually leather on the inside and has a decorative, I don't know how well you're gonna see this, but it has a decorative Celtic knot with a dog on the inside, has the martingale loop on the outside. Do you remember this, Zeuser? Do you remember? You remember? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, doggos. Oh, doggos. Everybody, everybody. Okay, so the other good thing about this collar is it has a brass release, which makes it very easy to put on and off. One of the problems with martingale collars is that they can be kind of a pain to put on if they don't have one of these quick releases, because then this part of the collar has to be large enough to actually fit over the entire head. Ah, got all sorts of stray hairs flying in my face. So that's a plus. Um, brass, tarnishes. I don't know if that's a negative to you. It is to me. I don't like the way it looks. And leather. Let's talk about leather. Leather has some pros and cons. The pro to me is the appearance. It's very soft. This one is padded. I love that. The cons, if it gets wet, it is 100% porous. Regardless of what they treat the collar with, it makes no difference. Um, leather is a porous material because even if they treat it with something that's meant to be waterproofing, where there's stress in the collar, which is normally in places that it flexes, it can absorb bacteria, it can absorb viruses, it can absorb fungus because leather is of course a natural product. So that's a big negative. And if your dogs swim a lot, I don't love leather collars for that reason. So this is a, a different type of leather collar hopefully you can see on the inside this is heavily padded and the reason that I prefer if I was going to go leather for any length of time of having that padding is again it's just distributing the weight over the esophagus so that if you grab the collar either by a leash or by your hand and you pull you are having a little bit of protection and the edges on this are what they call rolled meaning that they've actually filed the edges into a round bull nose shape it has a very very nice buckle which you can see is also padded across it. I love that. Um, this one has a minor buckle, and this is where you would hang your tags. I am particularly fond of that in a collar because I don't want the tags where I attach the leash because they're most likely to get bent or to be damaged and end up falling off, so I don't love that. Has a nice brass buckle, and you can see 
somebody felt the need to chew this one. So that's no longer in rotation. But I ultimately stopped really using leather collars at all except for show. So this is a, let's get it out here. This is a custom made uh, show leash and hopefully you can see the bead detail on it. Um, this is made out of kangaroo and the kangaroo is actually wrapped over a nylon core that has several thousand pounds of uh, pull strength in it. So even though leather can snap and can break because this is braided over a nylon core, I am not terribly worried about it as a show lead. So it's actually technically a show lead, not a show leash. Got big heavy duty hardware and then this is a slip collar which you would slip over the dog's head and there you go. So one thing about slip collars, and I'm probably gonna do this backwards to the video because the video is always upside down, or excuse me, backwards to me, is when you are putting the, the lead on, you wanna make sure when it's facing you that it's creating a letter P. So to me, this is accurate to you, it would be backwards. The reason being is you want the, the leash to release and not hold tension. And it has to be, when you put it on the dog, it has to be, you know, kind of making a P, which for you guys would be that way, I believe for me is this way. Okay, so again, this is kangaroo. This was custom made. And the only difference between this really and a choke chain is that this is not made out of chain. And it's super thin and super narrow. And when you are showing a dogo, you want it right behind the jawline so that it more or less disappears because you're trying to show the dog in its totality with its neckline uninterrupted by a collar. And so that's great. Now these, I cannot give you the manufacturer. I have several of them that were custom made, but she has stopped making leashes. So I can't help you there. All right, this is another collar. This one is from Mad Cow Designs and it has glass beading in the front. It is padded, it is leather, and it goes, of course, from wide to thin through a buckle. And Zeus wore this quite a long time before I finally retired it. And what I don't like about this, this is a beautiful collar and I had lots of photos. Don't mind that I'm outdoors and my neighbors have kids outside. It was really beautiful and I loved it and it was pretty, but it was actually kind of a pain over time. And again, I abandoned it for that reason because what happened was in through the glass beading, uh, it got caked with dirt, it got caked with mud. I didn't particularly have a problem with fungus or bacteria or viruses to my knowledge, but that is always a risk. Emma, off, come, good girl. She's like, they're so, they're next to my yard. They're next to my yard and mommy is here and I must tell them that they are too close to the yard. Okay, so the downside of leather, obviously it is insecure in, in terms of the fact that it can break. Um, it's very hard to clean. It can get dirt, it can get mud, it, bacteria can grow in it, mold. Uh, so it's great for photo shoots. I don't like it as an everyday collar personally because of course my fear is that even if you treat it with uh, oils like mink oil, eventually it can dry out and it can become brittle and it can crack and I don't like that about that particular collar. Do you remember this one, Zeusy? Do you remember that collar? That's your collar. That's your collar. So here we have a traditional chain collar and this falls into the category for me. There we go. So for me, this may be backwards to you. This is the way it should go on the head of the dog. Uh, this is going to last forever, but this is a training tool. This isn't to me an everyday wear collar. Same thing with technically any Martindale collar, even this one, whoops, even this guy off. Martindale collars are training collars, they're not everyday collars. Oh, they hear the neighbors, they're gonna go feisty. I don't like these collars for many reasons. First of all, of all the collars, 
anything that's made out of metal is not meant to be worn all the time. So whether it is a chain collar like this, I'm missing another one, or like this, they're basically the same concept. This is a show version, as you can see, that it looks more like a piece of jewelry. This one is specifically a training collar. Um, obviously, it's using a chain link. There's a couple problems with these. First of all, both of these collars are going to put a phenomenal amount of pressure directly on the esophagus and can cause esophageal injury. So this is neither of these types of chain collars are things that you should leave on your dog all the time. They are a problem, they are dangerous. Um, generally speaking, any type of, of chain does have the benefit of being waterproof. It's generally hypoallergenic. It's easy to clean. You're not going to get like tons of mold or dirt. You're not going to get viruses or bacteria living in this because it's not porous. Uh, but I don't, I would never ever advocate you leaving either of these type of collars on your dog all the time because they are training collars. Hello. Okay, so next type of training collar. Um, this is one of my favorite types of training collars prior to me moving into e-collars or electric collars. And I think this is one of the most efficient ways that you can teach a Dogo Argentino or any large breed to walk without pulling your arm out of the socket. Um, obviously these dogs are extremely strong and so this is a Sprenger collar from the famous manufacturer Herm Sprenger and it is a prong collar sometimes called a pinch collar and if you guys want a video on putting this on measuring it um, learning to teach your dog to walk with respect so it's not pulling your arm so that even a young child can do it I would be happy to do a video on this uh, these collars get a bad wrap based on the way they look but remember Dogo Argentinos get a bad rap based on how they look. And we all know that judging on appearance is a non-winning situation because appearance isn't reality. So I would love to do an in-depth um, video on this particular style of collar. So it is uh, basically a martingale collar. Again, you pull on the live link the dead link keeps you from continuing to pull. And this is actually an incredibly humane um, training tool. In my opinion, far more humane than a typical choke collar, but they do look intimidating. There are many different styles and I'm gonna go into that on a video if you guys wanna learn how to walk your dog without him pulling your arm off. Okay, so our final collar today is an e-collar or an electric collar. It contains two parts. We have your control unit and we have your receiver and the collar base is actually cut to fit it is a plastic material of some sort so there's pluses with this particular brand which I am very fond of this is the educator and this is the boss version this under proper training is one of the, one of the best investments I've ever made off They can hear the dogs in the neighboring yards. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, so let's talk just briefly about e-collars. I may or may not do another video on those. I think that e-collars are something, and actually all training collars, so e-collars, prong collars, uh, chain collars, choke chain collars, those are all training aids. They're not collars that should be on all the time. Um, you should have periods where you're taking them off. For a couple of reasons. If you leave a training collar on all the time, you are actually diminishing the value of that collar as a training aid. Uh, it is definitely something that you should be using with a professional's help. This is not stuff you should really experiment at home because there is the possibility of causing a negative training loop. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't have a structured program behind you, and you're doing the wrong things, you can actually exacerbate bad behavior. So 
I'm up in the air as to whether or not I should go too far with any of those tools simply because I do think you should be working with a professional behaviorist or a professional trainer before you start using them at home. YouTube is great. God bless YouTube, but you can't learn everything you need to know about training through YouTube videos because so much of training is about actually absorbing the way you interact with your Dogo Argentino and how that Dogo Argentino is interacting. And written descriptions, I get a lot of questions that are very specific training-wise that I really can't help with because I, I would need to be physically present to see what the dog is doing and to see what you're doing. A description of it is not any good in terms of being very specific. It would be like me saying to a doctor who can't see me, I have a red rash, what can you do to help me? That could be a million things. It could be allergies, it could be injury. There's just, that's not enough information to really make useful recommendations. You sir. So because I need to be there, you know, I, I don't want anybody to watch a video and then go do something and create a negative situation because they don't have enough information to move forward in a positive way. So all training tools, shouldn't be on 24 7. They should be used in a structured uh, way so that you're actually training because alone this is a tool it doesn't teach anything. Alone this is a tool it teaches nothing. Alone again this is a tool it doesn't teach anything. All training methods are meant to help you convey something because we don't speak the same language as dogs. And so we're trying to use operant behavior conditioning in order to get them to understand what we're after in terms of positive behavior and negative behavior. Now, I will put this out there. It should be obvious by my collection of, of collars, but if it's not, I don't believe in positive only training methods. And I will go into this for several reasons uh, in a different video, but I'll just give you the quick answer. The reason I don't believe in it is because it doesn't work and it's not natural. The reason it doesn't work is because if you're only trying to reward a positive behavior, if that behavior doesn't show up, you can never give the reward. And so the negative behavior is moving on and moving on and moving on and becoming more and more deeply ingrained and deeply seeding and you're not able to nip it in the bud because the positive behavior didn't show up. So yes, dogs can learn from positive only training, but it's actually incredibly inefficient. Uh, it's unnatural. In the wild, dogs do have both positive and negative reinforcement from their pack. If a puppy gets out of line, a mama will correct that puppy. She'll give it a quick nip. That's a negative reinforcer. If you only talk to your dog in terms of positives, you're cutting off half the conversation. If you can only say positive things, you can't say any negative thing ever, you're really only having half a conversation and it's to me very inefficient and will take a lot longer to train which is why I do believe in uh, training that has both positive reward and adverse or negative consequences to unwanted behavior. Now in terms of behavior it's very one of the most important things you can do with any kind of collar is to make sure that you're being fair with your corrections and that the timing is very very quick. If your timing is not quick you are not necessarily reinforcing the behavior that you either want to extinguish or that you want to encourage. So timing is very, very important. But, okay, so this is my collar roundup. I'm gonna show you the piece de resistance, my favorite collar, boom, and it's this bad boy. And there will be a link in the description, but there's also a link on my community page. This is an incredible collar and I love it for so many reasons. First of all, hopefully if I put my hand behind it, you can see it. This is almost, uh, it's probably just at a quarter inch thick of nylon. So it's very, very, very heavy duty. It is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It has seven rows of stitching long ways and numerous reinforcement points on the end. It has a massive, massive, attachment point, big heavy buckle, a double latch. Of course, this is my actual Zeus collar, so he's got his tags on it and stuff. I like this collar for several reasons. You are not going to break this collar. You're not, you're not going to break it. This is the a very similar thickness 
to uh, a come along that I have in my car that's rated for 35. Hello. Hello there. Yes. 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 <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. I'm sorry. We, we need to stop for, for Dogo kisses. Dogo kisses have to happen. Dogo kisses have to happen. Okay, so you're not going to break this. 35,000, and I'm, I'm willing to bet this is right up there with the 35,000 uh, pounds of pressure. So this, any dog is not going to break this collar. There's plenty of attachment points, and they are not just stamped. They're actually burned so that the material is actually melded together through heat. Uh, obviously, it is waterproof. It's not going to degrade no matter how much water that you put it in, unlike a leather collar. Leather collars will rot. So this isn't going to get a weird smell. This definitely will. The more it gets wet, the smellier they get. If you needed to or wanted to, you could 100% put this in the wash. You could put it in the dishwasher if you prefer. Uh, it's going to be clean. It's not going to retain any bacteria or any viruses. They're easy to take care of. Um, they are, this particular one, I believe, retails for uh, $39 which I thought was a lot because normally nylon collars are really cheap like this one I think is like maybe in the seven to nine dollar range compared to this guy but this is the best collar I've ever had I love this collar uh, great attachment point it is wide and the reason that a wide collar is of benefit to you when you have a large breed is because again if this is hooked to a leash and the dog for whatever reason pulls you are spreading that pressure across the throat and not concentrating it on the esophagus, which is one of the reasons that you don't want to do that with something like this, which is merely a show collar, um, which is why it looks like jewelry. And part of showing a Dogo Argentino or any large breed when you go to a dog show is showing your control over the dog, meaning that you don't have to pull it around like this, even though there's other dogs around it. So that is the benefit of having something that's wide. Easy to clean, easy to maintain, will last forever, isn't gonna break, uh, I think is a really excellent choice for an everyday wear collar. And this is the collar that I take my dogs swimming with. It's the collar that I take them on walks with. Um, I love this collar. This collar was not that great once I started swimming them all the time. So this started to smell. At, down. Good girl. That wasn't cool. I didn't want it to smell. And it, it got, it just didn't look really nice after not very many swims. Uh, it absorbs water. It got mushy. Um, they dry out. They're just, they're not a plus to me. So I'm not a, not a big fan. Anyway, so ultimately in terms of an everyday collar, I like nylon collars. They're strong. They're easy to clean. They're resistant to bacteria, viruses, mold, all things that leather collars are not resistant to. Um, easy to get, easy to keep. I like them. They're strong. Training collars. Uh, in terms of training collars, my own personal preference, I don't love chain collars um, at all. I would personally either go prong collar or e-collar but you need help with that that is not something that you can just roll out by yourself and expect to work out because the collar is a tool like I said and you need the training program to make it effective otherwise you could easily be doing the wrong thing so if you guys like my video pretty please like comment share subscribe hit that bell for notifications let me know what you're thinking and how your day is as always, have a dogotastic day and I thank you.